but I am back and we got the punch filter going on here and I don't I, I don't like this punch filter so we're gonna go ahead and get out of this and uh, we're going to go back to let's see let's turn this vintage off real quick actually let's turn the adjustable gradient off and let's go back and let's find this one right here and let's click on this HDR layer and then we're going to come up here and we're going to click on the masking brush real quick and uh, I'm going to go ahead and go around these uh, rocks real quick. Just really quick and you can raise the brush size up with your brackets on your keyboard if you'd like. And uh, just because I don't want all that poppiness on the rocks, I just kind of want to tone this down. The whole point of the rocks was just to give it a little bit of depth and to uh, bring your eyes back up to her. I just kind of want to take this poppy this stuff off of these rocks real quick. So we are going to just do this real quick and let's go and then we got the address adjustment brush <laughs> sorry and you could come in here and you could uh, go ahead and click on vibrance again or reveal shadows or reveal highlights uh, magic eye fixer uh, HDR um, detail like I click on detail and uh and we can just go over here and just start going over these rocks and these bubbles and you can start bringing out more details into these guys just like that and uh let's see so you could go through these if you guys want um there's not really anything that i really want to make pop anymore so we'll just go ahead and close the adjustment brush and let's see go down to glow and we're going to click on angel glow We're going to control Z that and we need to make sure that we turn all our other layers back on. I forgot about that. And if you want to keep something, um, you'll want to add a new layer. There we go. Now let's go ahead and uh, let's go back to normal. And then let's click back on Angel Glow real quick. And give it a second to do its thing. And see that Angel Glow just makes it pop. So they got all kinds of stuff. They got Hollywood Glow, Dreamland, um, White Soft. You could go ahead and look through all these. I don't want to. I'm just going to leave this glow just like that. I'm going to pr press New Layer. And let's see, we got HDR look. You can do a subtle HDR look if you'd like. And it just kind of makes that stuff pop a little bit more. Do a surreal. I really don't like that one. You can do a glow. And make it glow a little bit more. And you could do exaggerated uh, something flesh in tones so I think I'm gonna click on settle and leave it just like that and we're gonna add a new layer 
and you got a texturizer. I don't want to use this one for this, but there's a, a bunch of effects with textures in here. And it's just kind of amazing uh, that these guys give you all this stuff for free. And you don't have to go into your other program and play around with it and stuff like that. Um, this is a vignette, and I'm going to give this a vignette, and I'm going to do the big softy. Just like that, and it kind of brings your eyes back into here more. And I really like that. So uh, click on new layer just in case there's something down in vintage that we want to use. And uh, they got something called ocean waves. I don't really remember what this is, but it kind of tones the image down. And if you give it a minute to warm up and stuff, you'll see over here what it'll look like. We can click on cool and do that. Uh, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to add no more to this, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that layer. Oh, whoops. Control Z to go back because I didn't want to do that. And I don't know, maybe, nah, kind of too blue now. I don't know. We'll leave it like that and we'll just, we'll see. Uh, let's go back to the adjustment brush real quick, and I want to uh, click on the detail. Give it a second to load up here, because like I said, this is a really big image. And I kind of just want to go around. some of these bubbles here. Just to kind of make them pop a little bit more. Just so you can tell they're here in the image. Just like that. You can go around the fish if you'd like to. Make these guys pop a little bit. If you want to. And uh, go in 50%. And it looks all jagged and stuff like that because when you zoom in, it's got to take a minute to load everything up like it's doing now. Hopefully, it don't crash on me because I got a bunch of things running. And as you can see, now it's going back to normal. So, and like I said, if you got a slower computer, um, I probably should have went ahead and scaled this image down before I brought this in here, but. That's okay, it's too late now because we're already doing it. Um, but if you got a slower computer, uh, go ahead and just tone that guy down some. Give it a second because we gotta reload all that stuff. And you just go in here and you just click on these fish if you'd like and bring out some details in them. My computer's really working now. Sorry if you guys could hear that in the background. And it's just the little subtle things that you do that make these things pop. And all you got to remember is black hides and white reveals in this program. And we'll just go back to fit. And there we go. That's, I really like that. Um, like I said, some of these might be a little bit too much. So you could just click on each layer and you could kind of just tone, tone these guys down with the layer opacity. And every time you click on one, it brings up that, uh, that filter over here 
it shows you what it looks like on the, but we're just we're just going to go back to the adjustment brush and it looks all fine to me so i'm just going to go to file and then save and close and give it a second to save Alrighty, and then just click on quit. And if we open up our water effect here, you will see that there is a mermaid tutorial copy. And it ain't going to save the image out for you unless you uh, clicked on save as JPEG. So we have that. And uh, I'll click on that. I don't know if I wanted to do that. I'm going to go ahead and close some of this stuff out here. Um, and when this stuff loads, loads up, I will be back. Alrighty guys, I am back. And as you can see, um, when we saved it out as PSD, I don't know if this has changed or not, but this is how this looks like in GIMP. And some of the effects did carry over, um, like some of the glows and stuff like that. But as you can tell, it didn't carry everything over. Um, as far as I can see anyways. So uh, here's what it looks like in Photoshop. And it carried everything over into Photoshop. So on that perfect effects, you guys will want to save that out as um, a JPEG. Copy JPEG instead of a PSD. Um, because uh, on perfect effects 8, uh, I could save it as a PSD and open it up in uh, GIMP. And it would carry over. But for some reason... Everything isn't carrying over in this image. Some things did though. Um, you can see like some of the details and stuff did carry in. And this is still a nice image uh, like this. Um, and it did carry over the vignette and stuff like that. But a lot of it didn't carry over. Um, as you can tell here in Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and file. And I'm going to save this out. Give it a second. Because like I said it's, it's pretty big. And actually, well, we'll let this load up real quick. Just give it a second. Um, it's a big file, 11.42 megabytes. But I'm going to cancel. And I'm going to go ahead and right click on this. And I'm going to convert it to a smart object. Give it a second and we are going to go into image and we are going to go to image size and I'm going to scale this down to 2000 and I'm going to press OK. Um, just because that image was way super huge. And so now I'll go back to save for web. And now you see it's only 3.10 uh, megabytes. So we're going to go ahead and save and uh, yeah. Save that out there. I'm going to go ahead and quit Photoshop. Save changes. No. And um, I'm going to do the same to this image over here. So if we go to image. Scale image. And we're just going to scale this down to 2000 scale. And that way it's just a smaller copy. Of this. And I'm just going to uh, save as. And copy XCF. Save. Yes, and file, quit, and there it is. So if that's all that you guys wanted, like I said, in perfect effects, instead of saving it as a PSD, just save it as a JPEG, a copy JPEG, and um, you might have, and uh, and then you could go ahead and do all the effects, and it'll get carried over into a JPEG. Um, if this is all that you guys wanted to see for this tutorial, then this is done, and thank you for watching. Um, but I am going to go ahead and load this up into GIMP real quick. I'm not GIMP, but Blender real quick, and uh, I'm going to show you guys real quick how I did that 
uh, lens distortion effect. So I'm going to press X and delete this cube. And I'm going to press Shift A. And I'm going to go into Mesh. Maybe. Shift A, Mesh. And then I'm going to go to Images uh, as Planes. And I'm going to go and open up that image. As tutorial copy. Yeah, tutorial copy. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to open it as Emission. And uh, actually, we don't need no transparency. So I'm just going to open it as Emission. And then I'm going to import the images as Planes. I'm going to press 1 and then 5. I'm going to press RX90 and then I'm going to press Control Alt 0 to line my camera up to the view. And I'm going to make the camera size the same size as the image, 2000 by 2000. And uh, I'm going to press N and lock camera to view just like that. And I'm going to zoom in here just a tad bit. And we are going to press S for scale. And I'm just going to scale this up. And then I'm going to align my camera with this. I'm going to press Shift F for fly mode. Press W to zoom in on it a little bit. And I'm going to press S for scale. Hold down Shift. And then hold down Shift and pan down just a tad bit. And I'm going to press Z and then go into material mode. And I'm going to hold down shift and pan just a tad bit more. Uh, just like that. That looks fine to me. I'm going to make this 100%. Uh, I'm going to the samples. Um, for right now, I'm going to leave the samples low. So I'm going to put uh, probably 200 samples just so it'll render fast. Uh, my performance 256, 256. And that is fine. I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, I'm going to hit F12 and I will be right back after it renders. Alrighty guys, I am back and it has rendered. And so I'm going to go up here and then I'm going to go into compositing. I'm going to click on use nodes and backdrop. I'm going to hold down control and shift and then left click to bring it up there. I'm going to press shift and spacebar to go to full screen. I'm going to press uh, V to zoom out. And then I'm just going to drag my nodes around here, just like that. And the, it's going to be simple what we're going to do. We're just going to do Shift A, and then we're going to go to Color, and then go to uh, Color, uh, not Hue Saturation, sorry. Control, let's plug that back into the viewer. Let's press Shift A, Color, and we want uh, Color Balance. And we're going to plug in a color balance node here. And I'm using my middle mouse button to zoom in. I'm going to give it a little bit yellow. And then I'm going to give it a little bit more blue. And then I'm going to pop in some red. Just like that. And that's all I'm going to do. And then I'm going to press Shift A. And then we're going to go down to Distorts. And we're going to use one of my favorite uh, nodes. The Lin Distortion node. And we are going to distort this by, let's say, 0.2. And a dispersion by 0.3. And we're going to go 0 0.02, I'm sorry, on the distort. Give it a second to load up here. And disperse is too much. Let's go 0.1. That's still too much. Let's go to 0 0.05. And that's still too much. So let's go to 0 0.03. And that's looking good there. I really like that. It just distorts kind of the edges here. And let's see. Let's maybe try 0 0.01 on this. Uh, 0 0.03. Let's try. Bring that up just a little bit. Eh, 0 0.02 was fine. And we might bring this up to 0 0.04. Just like that, and uh, I like that. And I think that's all I'm going to do. You could always come uh, into your uh, colors, and we could do a brightness contrast, shift A, 
color, gamma, shift A, color, uh, hue, I don't want hue correction, shift A, color, hue saturation, and we could go ahead and add the hue saturation, and we could go ahead and change the hue of the image if we wanted to make it a little bit more blue or a little bit more bluish green we if we'd like you change the value make it a little bit darker if you want we could put it in a brightness contrast node and uh, we could tone the brightness down some we could bring in some more contrast to this image and we could uh, plug in the gamma and we can tone down the gamma and you can make it look something like that if you'd like or we could turn the gamma way super high 1.2 might be something a little bit better uh, but I don't want to do that so I'm gonna hold down con uh, control make sure I'm clicked on this node and then hit X just like that and that's all we would do to this here uh, make sure you plug this into the compositor and let's go back over here and then let's just click right here and let's do the viewer node and then let's go ahead go to image save as image and let's go to the, where I got this stuff saved at copy and uh, I'll just press copy let's go ahead and name this to distort just like that and save it out and then you could go ahead and save the blend file uh let's see i'm ready to distort and save the blend file and then let's go ahead and quit this and close out of that and then let's go ahead and go in here and there's the distort. And bring them side by side. So here's the distorted one. And here's the regular one. And I like the distorted one better. Um, but it's just to personal preference. Uh, and we kind of tone the colors down just a little bit. But I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And I know it's a, it was a super long one. Um, but I really enjoyed this image and um, like I said, I've been getting asked a lot to go back into doing uh, photo manipulation. So I think I'm going to start doing more of them tutorials if people show interest for them. Um, the reason why I go through different things is because I don't know what everybody wants because only a couple people comment. So if there's something that you'd like um, and if I could do it uh, in tutorial form and stuff like that, I will. Go ahead and do that. Just leave a comment down below or a comment on my uh, YouTube page. Um, or you could also go to my uh, website and I have a comment section on there and you could comment there. Um, I check that stuff. Um, but if I don't get requests and I don't see interest for things, then I move on to different things. And I just do um, things until people find stuff that they like. So I hope you guys like this. Please like and subscribe for tons more tutorials and have a great day. Thank you.